led you uh, to the First United Methodist Church. I know part of your story, Turner, but yeah. then when you were married, I don't know uh, how did someone invite you to church? And you well, say, Turner grew up going to church here, so um, parents didn't go to church here anymore, but he knew that when he came home, he wanted to come back here, so we try to come to different churches, but um, this is where I felt most at home, and this is most similar to what I was you know, used to growing up, so that's kind of how we ended up at First Methodist. Yeah, I mean, I uh, It didn't really take much. I kind of knew we were going to be here without telling her we were going to be here, if that makes sense, so. Yeah. Found a warm place. Yeah, there's a lot of good. I mean, there's a lot more younger people that are back here now that go here. And then uh, the last 15 months, life has changed again with a with a wonderful addition to the Jones family. Yep. And with the addition of T. Yep. And I would just like for you to to, to to tell tell us all a little bit about T and that and that journey for you because it's been quite a journey, hasn't it? I guess a journey that begins before T. Yeah. yeah, when it started, what, two years, I guess? So our story, um, T's adopted, and um, our story kind of started out with as an infertility struggle. And um, we kind of had, you know, there's some things that happened, and just one thing led to another, and we were kind of at a point in our marriage where we were trying to weigh out the options of how we were going to grow our family. And um, it really, I mean, I remember the day vividly. Yeah. But we decided that we were being called to adopt and um, we kind of took it from there and never really looked back. But um, I guess adoption for us was a calling. Yeah, I mean, we felt it and it, it took some a lot of praying because it's uh, definitely different than a lot of people go through. But at the same time, I mean, it's amazing what, what God has kind of led us in our hearts to, to be able to do it again and hopefully Hopefully this year, I mean, we're planning to adopt another one. So I mean, it's uh, it's just been a process, but it's been a uh, wonderful process. So, so how long the process was that? You, you say you remember the day when you came to that realization. Was that a year process before? Or so it was a few days years? before Christmas, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it was right before Christmas that we. So like the night, the nineteenth, I think. We just kind of looked at each other, both of us just kind of knew that's, that's the path we wanted to take. And um, so that was December, and T was born the following October. Yeah, yeah and then you, you've got to go through your home studies. And I mean, once we once we made the decision to adopt, when did we go active? June the 8th, which an active means you start just presenting the birth mother. I mean, you have a profile book that has your family, your sure. everything about it, kind of your life story, and then um, they. They essentially give her a book, and then if she feels like it's a match, I mean, once you're matched, then you'll have conversations with her until the baby's born, and then you know, then you're there at the hospital, and you know, she signs her rights over, and you know, our baby is there on out. We wanted to be in control. We wanted we wanted to have our own children, and once we realized that we're biological children, once we realized that that wasn't the route that God wanted to take us, it's just amazing. Um, through the whole process once you realize that you're truly not in control. And once it's all done, you just kinda it's one of those aha moments and you're able to you're able to look back on it and realize why are we stressing, why are we, you know, why are we worrying about all this? Because in the end, he's in control and we have a perfectly healthy baby boy. You have to realize that somebody's walking away empty handed. I mean yeah. They're leaving, they're getting on a plane and going back to Arizona. So to you're nothing. so happy, you're so happy to meet your baby and we were so thrilled, like he was here, he was healthy. You don't know, you don't know until the baby's here what's gonna happen, is he is he healthy? Is, is everything gonna be okay? Well, he, he was, he was perfect in every way. It was, it was truly one of the most selfless acts. Of the she was beautiful gift. Yeah, I mean, that anyone could ever give us, I mean. Uh, birthday presents and anything like that, I mean, it's irrelevant now because, I mean, I mean that's the best, best gift we've ever had. Yeah. Have you been surprised to find out how many people in Dothan, maybe even how many people at First Methodist Church uh, are adopted or 
have a, a parent who's adopted or a brother or sister who's adopted. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's kind of like that. You, you would never, yeah. you would never. Until you mention adoption, people don't open up about it. I mean, yep. you have to be, you have to, that's like a word that, I don't know, people just don't, it's just something that's not talked about a lot. And once you realize that you open up and you start talking about it, you realize how many people are adopted, how many people want to adopt. I mean, we're very open about it and we like to tell people our story obviously like today but um, you know we just feel like that if we can get our story out there and tell people that it's okay it's you know we're here if you've ever got any problems or any concerns or questions maybe it can help someone else's situation out because you don't ever there's so many people that deal with infertility and other problems that, that it's, a, it's a, a lot of times a sad and sorry place that people don't talk about. And you know, we've been through it and all that, and if we can ever help anyone through that process, I mean, I feel like that's kind of what we were called to do in a way. Let me give you a hypothetical. Suppose you were speaking to a group of uh, fantastic church leaders. What would you say to them uh, that they could do to, to help a church be more helpful to people who are uh, looking to adopt children? What's the greatest thing a group of church leaders could do? Pray for, pray yep. for folks. That's key. That's a, I mean, prayer, Yeah, that, that was the thing we really hadn't even touched on today, but uh, there's so many people praying for us through this so, whole process that, I mean, you know, we knew that, I mean, things were tough, but at the same time, we knew that people were praying for us.